Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, I'm Jeff Kishmarek. I'm a vice president of the professional services group here at Brightcove. And uh, we're here to talk about best practices for user-generated content. Uh, we've got a, a nice somewhat panel. It's, we're we're going to give our presentations, and you can feel free to shoot questions as we talk along or save them up for after uh, everybody's presentation. And uh, we've got uh, a, a good mix of a uh, CMS partner and, uh, and uh, people that, that work specifically on uh, uploading some products like that. And we actually have a, a customer here to talk about user-generated content as well. So I just wanted to give a, a quick little perspective, which is uh, funny about, um, and don't note, don't note that I uh, left in a bullet here. So um, don't, what, what is he trying to say? What's that? incredible piece of knowledge he's trying to say with the secondary bullet. Uh, no, that's the content. This is the secondary bullet, not the PowerPoint template. So, um, The funny thing is, is uh, I, uh, I didn't see the, uh, we, we don't see the keynote presentations before or when we're creating our content. So I put together this deck of really trying to convince people of the power and the value of content. I think that kind of came through in the, um, in the keynote presentations today. So uh, luckily, uh, I'm not going to dive into that too much. But I, I just also wanted to make sure that people understood that user-generated content doesn't necessarily always mean that uh, you're getting you know, external users uploading content and in, in having campaigns and whatnot. I was just talking beforehand with um, one of my friends from a, a company that uh, we did some uh, work with last year. And it's also very powerful internally here. And what you see here in this screenshot is a screenshot from uh, Philips, who we just built a, a quick uh, user-generated portal where people could upload their content and talk about some experiences with some of their products that their own employees have. And that took off so much that that became sort of their, their, their focal point of their corporate internet of this is how people talk amongst the company. Um, so I just wanted to, to sort of start off with people, and it's not just about uploading your, your roller skating cat and whatnot and, and funny stuff like that. So. Um, you know, we saw the, the big push for user-generated content about two years ago uh, when a lot of the content um, around the, the marketing started to show that pages with video draw more vi visitors through search. So if you're doing a search in Google and you see something with video, those pages are, are always getting the, the more click-throughs. Um, and now I think there's some... I think Steve has them in his deck too about if something is on somebody's video, if there's a video on somebody's wall on Facebook, it's, it's like 200 times more powerful than, not steal your thunder, but uh, it's like 200 times more powerful than just seeing a, a search result in Google. So people started saying, well, we, we've got to get all this content. We need video content on every page. And wow, that's super expensive to do that. And how are we going to do that? And that's when we started saying, okay, we're, we're going to start getting some more user-generated content. And so, uh, you know, when we started seeing the demand for that in the professional services team, that's obviously the, our friends at File Mobile started seeing uh, a demand on that enough to, to create a platform out of that and our, our customers here as well, too. So, um, so one thing that we know, I, I just talked about Philips. This is a, a great example. I showed you the upload form where people are just you know, tagging it. And uh, this is basically all you're asking your users to do. And you, it's nice to, to keep it really nice and simple. And then after that, you can create some really nice experiences. We've got some comments and ratings. And then it's everything that you'd, you'd want to uh, you'd expect out of your sort of normal uh, video portal. And the great thing about this, as I said, all of this content that you're seeing there, they didn't have to pay, right? You know, with all these presentations going on, we saw in, in our offices over the last few weeks the video crews coming in and the camera and the makeup and all that fun stuff. You, you don't need that with, with a lot of this user-generated content. So uh, just a great value that we saw uh, in a different context where, um, where people were giving it to their internal employees, and uh, we actually started calling this EGC internally, so employee-generated content. Um, so it's just a great outreach. It, uh, it's uh, giving people their voice with inside the company, and, and it's, it's been a, a really powerful thing in some of these bigger corporations. Um, obviously, I think everybody knows uh, UGC increases participation. You, uh, and, and if you turn on your social networking tools as well, you know, people are, are, are 
joining these campaigns, they're talking about their stories, you're giving them a voice, and then after that, uh, you're letting your social networks take over, and uh, in, you know, put people posting these things on their Facebook walls, and putting them on Twitter, and, and bring people back into these, these sites, and uh, obviously the user experience, we always try and do a nice job around that as well, too, but um, I think just giving users the, the feel, and, and you know, these guys have a lot more, uh, uh, interesting research on this, I think, about the, giving them a part of the conversation uh, is what we're really trying to drive users towards. So, I'm Michael Assad, the co-founder and CEO of Agility, and I basically have one big idea that I'd like to share with you today, and it's basically this. Um, so you hear all the talk about tablets and mobile and social media, they're kind of all the rage right now, but the reality is that everything is still anchored by your website. So your website is still the primary discovery vehicle for your audience. And user-generated content is the engine for that. So what do I mean by discovery? So basically, your website is the most accessible form of your content. Anyone can access it from anywhere, whether you're at home or at work, on your phone or on your computer. Your content is most accessible on your website. And obviously, your website content sort of automatically ties in with search engines. It's easy to share on social media. and Essentially, your website is still the most accessible and the primary form of your content. So how do you get discovered? Um, one, one of the primary ways is through search engines. So obviously, Google's still the primary one there, but uh, Bing and Yahoo are still significant and need to be uh, you know, remembered. So obviously, there's also social media, so Facebook and Twitter being the obvious ones, but you can't forget about some of these upstarts. Um, YouTube is huge, obviously, for video, LinkedIn, Google Plus is growing. It's 90 million users uh, right now, as we learned this morning. And uh, newer sites like Pinterest, so magazines, for example, are seeing significant amounts of traffic coming in from Pinterest these days. Um, StumbleUpon, Reddit, these are also really good uh, sources of, of uh, traffic and discovery. So obviously, you, know, you have to pick the channels that make sense for your audience. But the primary way that you get discovered, and Jeremy talked about this this morning as well, is by creating great content. So today, everyone's a publisher, whether you're brand or media. Look at Red Bull, for example. You, know, you always hear the Red Bull example, but it's, it's quite exceptional. These guys invent their own sports, like airplane racing, <laughs> downhill skating. They just invent sports, put them up on social media channels, put them on TV, and they build their audience. So how do you generate great content? Well, the Red Bull model is to pay top dollar for professional screenwriters, producers, and uh, filmmakers and whatnot. And it provides exceptional results. Unfortunately, most of us don't have the budget for that. So an alternative a lot of companies are, are using is uh, to offshore content development to companies like India and overseas, um, where you can get large volumes of content produced for very little, but the quality suffers. So here's an idea. Tap into your loyal user base. They're free. And they're also very passionate. So these are users that come to your brand or come to your publication <clears throat> every day or every week. They know what you're all about. They're very passionate about your topic. And uh, so they're going to produce great content for you basically for free. UGC is also mass, mass volume. So you can, th you can think about like, the number of users you have out there. You know, a fraction of that is going to be passionate users. They're going to produce content for you. If you're a big brand like Red Bull, you have millions and millions of people that can produce content for you. And you don't have to tell them what they want. or You don't have to guess what they want. They'll tell you what they want. So what you end up doing is, rather than spending your time and money generating content, which is expensive, you can spend your time curating and enhancing the best content. So user-generated content is inherently viral. So people are contributing this content, so obviously they want to share it with their friends, families, and coworkers. So let's say you have a huge user base. They're, ready, they're prepared to, enter, to uh, contribute content for you. So how do you get started? So basically, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your website has a facility to, um, to accept user-generated content and to um, you know, get it into your systems. Um, and then basically your content team 
reviews that content, moderates the, the, the best stuff, and publishes it back up to your site. It's also important to keep the user engaged in the process. So you want to make sure if someone submits content to your site, they know what's happening with it. So is it getting published? If, if yes, great. If not, why not? So that you can keep them engaged and coming back and keep contributing that content. So obviously in the back end, um, the content comes into your content management system. So most content management systems out there will have uh, facilities built in for mo handling and moderating user-generated content. If it doesn't, you should probably look at getting a new one. Agility is a great one. I've heard that, I've heard that one's pretty good. Um, so then obviously for user-generated video, an exceptional place for that is Brightcove. And all of these leading CMSs have integrations with Brightcove. So they can use, you can use like an Agility or a Drupal or Ectron or what have you for handling the text and image content. They can also accept video content in from the site, but then when, once that content's published back out to the site, it gets pushed into Brightcove where it goes into their ecosystem as well. So all these CMSs have that uh, integration. So once you have your user-generated content in there, how do you maximize that? So starting off with search, there's three primary things that you need to maximize when it, when it uh, comes to search. The first is, uh, well, obviously generating great content, but then finding keywords that work for your content, and gathering links and building links, which is the primary driver of the fabled page rank. So starting off with keywords, what I'm really talking about here is long tail keywords. So if you're not familiar with long tail keywords, they're essentially sort of longer phrases for search. So um, and they sort of narrow the search focus down to a more specific thing. So you could search for fishing, or you could search for fly fishing in Minnesota. And the second search term is what's called a long tail keyword search, and it's going to generate more specific results that are you know, more likely to turn up specific pages on your site. So the first thing to do with, uh, in terms of long tail keywords is to figure out, okay, what are the long tail keywords that matter for me? Um, so it's it's usually a multi-stage process. There's different tools to do that. Uh, Google AdWords is a good place to start to see you know, what people are searching for. Um, that's a free tool. Uh, there's also paid tools from companies like HubSpot and SEO Moz that you can use to start establish what the long tail keywords are that matter for you. So then once you figure out what the long tail keywords are, you sort of build into your curation process a step where your curator or moderator actually inserts the keywords into your content. So let's say you get a really great article talking all about fishing, but it doesn't say fly fishing in Minnesota, and you really want to return results for that. You, you go in and you insert those keywords inside the text. And obviously, you don't want it to sound too fabricated. You have to be clever about it. But adding that step to your cur curation process will help get those keywords into your content, and then that content's going to show up in the search results. So the other element of search is link building. So the obvious place to start is through posting your site on free directories. There's hundreds of them out there. You can search for it and you'll find uh, directories where you can post your site, just a straight up link to your site with a description kind of thing. Uh, a longer term strategy is to build up relationships with influencers in your industry. So partner companies, partner brands, influencers are people that you know, are in the industry, people know, know who they are. So build up a relationship with them by sharing their content, promoting their content, retweeting them, posting stuff on their Facebook, and they get to know who you are. And then when you post a great article that's related to something that they've said, they'll be happy to link back to you um, because you've kind of established that relationship. In terms of link building, this is another area where the Bright Cove Video Cloud really comes in handy because uh, when it comes to video, a lot of people think that YouTube is the best place for video because it's owned by Google, so you figure you know, you're going to get the search results back. The problem with that is that <clears throat> with YouTube, all of the links that people link to your video are actually linking to them, increasing their page rank and their authority. Whereas with Brightcove, you're embedding videos in your pages, and in some cases, your pages only. So anyone who links to it has to link to your site, which is going to be a huge boost to your page rank. So the other side of it is uh, content marketing. So you hear this term a lot nowadays. Um, I kind of think of it in two ways. I'll, you borrow from SEO and call it on-page and off-page content marketing. So on-page meaning you got to make your content easy to share. Um, that means having link but like buttons that you can share within one or two clicks to get your content to social like to Facebook or Twitter or wherever that is. And uh, 
off page is things like taking your articles and your content and posting it up on the internet. So whether that's throwing it out on Twitter, whether that's on LinkedIn, following discussions and posting your content in relevant discussions, or just being active out there in social media, posting your content where it makes sense for your audience. The first thing you have to figure out is, okay, where is my audience? You know, you hear Facebook and Twitter, you know, all the time, but that's not the end of social media and that's not the end of the internet. Um, it really depends on who you're talking to. Some people are far more active on LinkedIn than they are on Facebook. There are still there are 90 million users on Google Plus that are very passionate about it. Um, there are w women, especially on Pinterest, is, is a huge, huge uh, growth curve. So you need to figure out where you are, where they are, and then um, focus on those channels. Once you know where they are, you have to be active there every single day. So it's not something you can just do once a week. You really have to be on top of your specific channels every single day. Um, it sounds like a lot of work, but once you figure out the one or two or three channels that your audience is on mostly, then uh, you can kind of uh, find some efficiencies there. So just to sort of wrap up with a case study. So the topic was that uh, the website is still your primary discovery vehicle and user-generated content is the engine. So a great example of that is World Fishing Network. So these guys rebuilt their site around, uh, I guess, a couple years ago now. And they incorporated user-generated content so that over 50% of the content on their site is actually <coughs> user-generated. So it's things like you know, someone's review of a fishing rod or someone's actual photo of a fish they caught and you know, the, um, the story behind it. And then they have trophies and points and all these things that you can uh, participate in. Uh, and they have an extremely loyal and passionate user base that's generating great content for them. Um, and obviously that's helped to boost their, their uh, page rank and their uh, search uh, results. And also it's you know, generated a huge amount of buzz in the fishing community and drawn more people to it. And uh, their traffic immediately spiked. It's probably about, on average, about 30% higher than it was before they, uh, they started you know, using user-generated content. So it's, it's been a very successful uh, campaign for them. Good afternoon, uh, David Zarnecki from Major League Gaming. Uh, just to give you some background, I'm a lead engineer at uh, MLG. Uh, I'm also part of the Bright Cove development community, so if there are any developers out in the audience, uh, I had written the, um, the media API wrapper for, for Ruby and uh, came here last year to uh, Bright Cove Play to talk about how we had integrated Bright Cove in building out MLG TV, which is our, uh, our platform for delivering uh, online video for all of our pro circuit events and user generated content. And uh, all of that was, uh, and it still is uh, powered, powered by Bright Cove. Um, the, uh, also happened to take home one of the awards last year for the top online community contributor. I'm not sure how I actually won that, but uh, uh, I, I just remember answering a couple of forum posts. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, if you actually watched the video from uh, last year, I was uh, noticeably absent since I had left the, the, the last day but wasn't here to accept the award, so I apologize for that. Um, so MLG TV uh, site is 100% powered uh, bright, by Bright Cove. Uh, it is our video content aggregator for all of our video on demand that we collect uh, at our live events that we do uh, four or five times a year. We have these uh, what we call pro circuit events. Uh, so people are uh, competing online in games like StarCraft, League of Legends, Halo, Call of Duty. Uh, games that your kids are probably playing for uh, nine or ten hours a day. Uh, a big, yeah, a, a big part of the the site is uh, user generated content uh, that we added uh, the latter half of 2011. I forget when we added that in in 2011. Uh, for individual gameplay so that people can uh, register on the site and upload video up to half a gigabyte of, uh, of content, which at different resolutions uh, is, uh, you know, an, an entire match for maybe 15 or, or 20 minutes. Um, but, uh, you know, the users will, will use that to uh, showcase uh, team play, to go over strategies, so it's a, a really integral part of uh, um, 
and an interesting complement to the, the produced and professional content that, that we offer there. Uh, if you go there right now, mlg.tv, uh, you'll see it's organized into playlists. We, we do tagging, uh, all the individual and related videos uh, that, that, that Brightcove offers you from the API, um, searching via text and tags, and then uh, uh, I forget, we haven't done this for a while, but we also do uh, streaming on the, the homepage um, for, for different nightly events where teams are, are competing against one another. Uh, so the format of my presentation uh, was taking kind of six different areas, I think five or six different areas of uh, building user-generated content into MLG TV and kind of the lessons learned. So uh, maybe a little bit lower, uh, lower level. Uh, I've tried to um, not be as nerdy um, as I might look. So, but again, if you, uh, <laughs> if you have questions either uh, in the presentation or afterwards or afterwards, um, then I'd uh, be happy to answer those. Uh, so this is kind of what it looks like if you are uh, registered on the site and you go to upload content. So you can drag a video onto uh, the, the box there or just select one to upload. Uh, pretty uh, similar to uh, what, was, what Jeff had shown before with the, the blue tube and uh, Phillips. Um, so it'll tell you what file you're uploading, give you some up indicator of upload progress. You can do a description uh, to talk about the, the video and uh, uh, then also tag the content and you know, all of that you can pretty well correlate to uh, what, what is in Brightcove's back end. So first best practice here, upload, up, uploading via your, your web server. Uh, I apologize for the, uh, um, uh, maybe for the uppercase, lowercase here, but. Uh, so I'm assuming that in your infrastructure, you've got uh, an application server that, that sits behind a web server. And traditionally, uh, application servers are terrible at, uh, at doing things for a long period of time uh, and uploading large files like half a gigabytes uh, of, um, of user-generated content is, is certainly one of those areas. Uh, so, Instead of having your application server do all the, the heavy lifting of trying to get data um, from, from the end user to, to be uploaded, uh, have a web server that's, that's sitting in front and typically they're uh, just dropping modules for uploading and upload progress uh, that you can uh, uh, just have the IT folks or your system folks configure. And uh, they're also really good at handling uh, large numbers of uploads at the same time. So, you know, in our case, uh, we have players who are competing in matches and, uh, you know, if there's disputes, they want to upload uh, those replays right away so that somebody can, can, resolve, those, can resolve those disputes. Uh, so definitely better to have your application server uh, doing the, the things that actually running your application as opposed to powering your, your uploads. Offload processing, it, uh, it definitely takes, if, if you have, uh, say, a half a gigabyte of video, it takes a long uh, amount of time, not just to uh, upload that to your server, but then uh, kind of the, the middle stage of, of uploading that to Brightcove and then getting that processed. Uh, again, application servers are, are bad at the, the long-running tasks, uh, so best to do all the, the things that you need to do to process video, kind of get the state of uh, how the, the video is being encoded, if there was a problem with uh, uh, the video being uh, uploaded to Brightcove, but, but doing those kind of out of band from, from the rest of, of your application. Uh, so on MLG TV, when we were doing uh, the UGC portion, uh, we just assume that uh, you know, we have a few different workflow states. So things are uh, queued, they're being processed uh, by Brightcove, they either fail or complete. Uh, and uh, uh, when we start doing uploads to uh, Brightcove, we store a unique reference identifier so that uh, uh, we can 
correlate and easily uh, search that video, not in just in our database, but uh, when it gets uploaded to Brightcove, uh, so we can be able to pull that, pull that easily. Uh, it's a wonder the internet works at all. Um, if uh, when you've actually developed um, for the internet, uh, so <laughs> sometimes the internet uh, doesn't work. Uh, and I guess there's the, the old adage of if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. So in, in our case, uh, we found that um, just network connectivity or, or whatever it is, uh, you know, we, we may lose a connection to, to Brightcove from our service provider. So uh, just retrying your, your uploads again. Um, it's a shame you can't go directly to Brightcove to do UGC, uh, but you know, in uh, in the absence of actually being able to do that, it's just easier to to retry. And uh, um, usually, you'll, we'll we'll get it right within uh, um, the the first try. Searching uh, for us is really important. Uh, people want to be able to search via players, via teams, uh, different types of uh, um, tags or, or what have you. Um, so for us, uh, searching in, in Brightcove is powerful, but uh, we needed a way to augment the, the search capabilities. Um, the, the f one of the first issues that, that we ran into was kind of having a lag between uh, the user-generated content uh, being uploaded and then it being available uh, via the, the APIs for, for searching. Uh, so we, we decided to also index and be able to search all of our content locally. So we, so we index all of the, the Brightcove content. We have background jobs that, that run periodically to pull all the modified content from Brightcove. And for us, in the, if, if you go to MLG TV right now, you'll see that the site is basically instantaneous when you're, when you're searching uh, and kind of fastening around and, and looking for a different gameplay. So for us, that was really important just to be able to boost different things that, uh, that we weren't able to necessarily do with the Brightcove API. So for us, uh, having uh, local search uh, really helped with uh, being able to break down the, the user-generated content. Uh, and then uh, with, with Brightcove, um, since the API and when we're interacting with uh, Brightcove, we're interacting at the, the API level. So it's only updating for us uh, every, or it only updates every five minutes. So there's really no need to keep hitting Brightcove every single request uh, response there to, to pull back uh, when you're just gonna get unchanged data. Uh, so we cache all of that data locally, um, and uh, we store that in, uh, in a local cache uh, so that uh, we're not hitting Brightcove all the time to, to actually uh, get the data that we need. And again, you'll see that's why the, the site is really responsive. Uh, what's also nice is that uh, depending on how you're caching the data, if you're storing that in uh, some persistent way, uh, if there are problems with uh, Brightcove uh, or whatever, um, whatever it is, uh, your site can continue to function, uh, which, is, which is nice. Yeah, my name is Steve Holford. I'm one of the founders of File Mobile, and uh, we are a premier partner at Brightcove. So, one of the other ways you can upload videos into Brightcove Video Cloud is through the Media Factory platform. And uh, we act as the sort of moderation transcoding tool, and you can send videos to Brightcove upon approval or automatically, or you can batch upload to Brightcove from there. So, working with uh, Brightcove now for a little over a year and, and, and many of Brightcove's customers. So you can buy our platform and our products directly from Brightcove. So we're happy to be working with them. Um, we're based in Toronto and New York and uh, we've launched over 2,300 different UGC programs, we're proud to say. So I want to talk a bit about UGC here and one of the big things I'm going to talk about here is you know the, the value of UGC. Um, it's a huge uh, value driver and I'll, I'll go through some of these points here. You know, one of the, we, we talked a bit about the, the fact that it reduces your content acquisition costs. You, 
and you see how expensive it is to produce professional content. Um, there's definitely a need, I'm sure, in your organization to uh, look at your audience and see what you can have them send you uh, and, and build some interesting programs around having them submit content to you. Um, when you have all that video content uh, in, in your programs and platforms, it becomes a great SEO boost. We talked about that a little bit earlier as well. When you've got a thousand videos out there all around unique subject matter, when people are searching for those things, they're going to find your site. And that one piece of content that didn't cost you anything to produce is now driving traffic to your site. And then, of course, the people that are actually submitting this stuff uh, become great brand ambassadors. And you can find out who these people are and build direct relationships with, with them. There may be sponsors uh, that are involved in your programs as well. And you can, as a, as a value, deliver to them some of these brand ambassadors. And there, there's some real characters, I'm, I'm sure, as you'd imagine, uh, doing these types of things. And then as, as UGC uh, often you need to register to do a lot of these different functions that, that are UGC. You can start to build a database of, of, of these people and, and, and mine you know, who the active users are and, and what it is they're contributing, and you can learn from that and then tweak your programs accordingly. And then UGC, obviously, with all this video people are uploading, it's a huge way to uh, uh, add stickiness to your site. When you've got all these video minutes being consumed, there's pre-roll opportunities there, and uh, post-roll opportunities. And then this last point, I think, which is a really, really important one, um, is you can help, UGC can help you grow your audience. And you do that through having people interact with UGC uh, through social networks. And the way we would just, just define what UGC is, is it's the social activities that drive this referral traffic and engagement. Things like voting, rating, commenting, uploading, friending, sharing, all those social activities. If, if people can log in through Facebook or Twitter, and they, when they, when they pr produce those social activities, you, you push all that stuff into the friend feed on Twitter and on Facebook, and it drives massive referral traffic. And what we find, there's always a barrier to participation with UGC. And at the top of the spectrum, voting, liking, or sharing something is the simple, the easiest thing to do. Um, and down at the bottom, asking someone to produce a video is one of the more difficult things to do. So what you want to do is combine in all your programs all the social activities you can. Because when someone posts a video in their friend feed on Facebook, or they like a video on friend feed, it has the same viral amplification. So you want to make sure you cover all these different social activities, pack all of them into your applications, and they'll drive this referral traffic I'm talking about. And why should you care? Because the results are really compelling. We, we, we did a study on our platform of 200 different programs, and we found that the UGC social activities drove an average of 15 to 20 percent incremental traffic through these social networks. So people are discovering this content um, through their social networks, through friends sharing content and discovering them on Facebook and Twitter and places like that. And then it's a different type of user that follows a link like that into your site. It's someone, they're obviously engaged in social networks and they're, they are the type of person that is more inclined to share and vote and rate and comment than an average user to your site not coming from social networks. So what are some of the popular use cases for UGC? You might be thinking, this is really cool, but what, how does it apply to what I do? And we're seeing all kinds of different uh, innovative and creative ways of using UGC. Lots of crowdsourcing of content. So you know, whether it's a, a website asking their audience to submit recipes, or inside a corporation, employee-generated content, people asking to uh, you know, continued knowledge sharing in the company, um, or brand managers who are aggregating all the creative assets inside the corporation that are being produced, or if you're involved in sporting activities and doing 5K runs and mud runs and things like that, people producing those types of videos and sending them in. And then we see a lot of news organizations using citizen journalism to actually um, augment the broadcasting that they're doing, where they're asking their audience to submit photos and videos of breaking news, and they're using them on TV. Like this video here, this tornado footage uh, that, that ripped through uh, Toronto not too long ago was caught by uh, a, a member and put on television, and that broadcaster aired over three hours of UGC footage that evening because they couldn't send their cameraman out in harm's way. 
and uh, their audience um, submit content on a regular basis. They u use it on TV. We ask a lot of our cl clients, especially the broadcasters, how, um, you know, what's the, what's the main reason why you get so much UGC sent to you? And it's because they show it on TV. And it sort of reaffirms to their audience that this stuff's going to be used, it's going to be posted, and there's this element of people want their 15 minutes of fame. So, you know, think about that as a, as a way to give it to them. And so here's some tips for getting more UGC. You know, you've got to be very specific when you ask people to do something. You've got to be very specific. It's, if, if you're doing an album cover art contest, you need to tell them exactly what they need to do. Uh, don't give them too many calls to action. Give them a specific task, and, and, and they'll do that. And then if you're thinking about motivi motivating them with prizing, think about an experiential prize, something money can't buy. You know, time and time again, that seems to be the thing that really gets a lot of people excited. Like the picture on the screen here, if anyone remembers the, the, the best job in the world, uh, in Brisbane, Australia, they ran a contest for the best job in the world, and they had something like $200 million in earned media because this just took off virally. And UGC is uh, naturally very viral. Uh, and this content was shown all over the world. Make sure you, you want to think about a concept that's going to mine the social graph. So if something that, uh, like, for example, people that play on sports team, they're right there. You've got 20 or 30 people that have a common interest and all know each other and probably friends on Facebook. So think about concepts where one uh, one concept w will really resonate with someone on a team and it'll spread through that team. And then ultimately, teams are competitive. They'll want to compete with other teams. Whoops. Um, and then think about, too, um, you know, adding all these social activities and like commenting and rating and voting to drive that referral traffic. And you also, you want to seed your content, too. Often, um, just to start it off, it's really important that if you're asking them to do something specifically, you've got five or six examples. When your project launches, that they can see exactly what it is you're looking to do. And you, maybe you produce that in-house. Maybe it was produced by uh, some of your employees, and you might take that content down once you start getting UGC in the door. But the last thing you want is to go live, and there's no content there, no examples of what it is you're looking for. And then you want to promote the best stuff on a regular basis. Post, you know, some interesting ones that are being um, uploaded. Post them on Twitter. Post them on Facebook. Make a point of mentioning the person's name that did it. That plays to this idea of wanting to be famous. And then remember, too, UGC, um, it needs to be curated. you really got to moderate this stuff. you got to moderate the comments. you got to moderate the pictures. And make sure there's no offensive content or copyright infringed content. Um, it's a big turnoff for an audience to go there and, and, and see uh, some of the dialogue that, that sort of degrades on like YouTube videos and things like that. So if you keep it clean and, and, and interesting and engaged, um, y your, your audience will thank you for it. So I'm going to show you a few quick case studies. Um, this is something Fox News is doing. They're using user-generated content to ask their audience for photos and videos that they can show on the nightly news. And they're doing this through assignments. So they're asking their audience, they're creating assignments on a regular basis. So what are you paying at the pumps is, is one of the assignments. So people are taking pictures and videos of what they're paying at the pumps. Uh, and they're sending that in. They use that on TV. Um, when, when the tornadoes ripped through Dallas in February or March, they created an assignment and asked people in the Dallas area, if you've seen this footage, you send it to us. And they used that on the news that night and had some of the most spectacular footage was sent in to Fox through their, uh, through their audience. And this is Active.com. This is a really popular sporting site. And what they're doing is they're using their community to show them how you, what, what, do, you, what do you do to be active? all the different ways people basically move and, and, and do different activities, outdoors or indoors, submit the photo and video into the active community. And it's all geotagged. So uh, this content, uh, you, you can see g content that's geographically relevant to you. And of, again, this is all being done um, through a Facebook login. So this stuff is being posted in Facebook and driving that referral traffic. Life is Good, a great Boston-based company. They're asking their audience to uh, you know, submit content around the concept of good vibes. And they're actually pulling in Instagram feeds and 
they're curating that, they're moderating the Instagram feed, and they're also allowing people to upload their own photos and videos yeah, into the site as well. And then ABC's Kelly Live, um, pretty much weekly, they're asking their audience to submit photos and videos, and then they're using this on TV. Right now they're looking for the cutest kid. So if you've got one, you maybe go to uh, Live with Kelly and upload it. Tons and tons of videos are coming in, and then they'll use these on television. Again, it's that sort of reaffirming to the audience that uh, when they do this, they get rewarded with their 15 minutes of fame. Then there's Ben and Jerry's, who's running uh, a contest right now, and they're asking their audience, what's your favorite flavor? And you, know, you can come here, and you can browse all this content all in the video, Brightcode video player, and upload content that gets moderated and into the contest. And lastly here, this is a, a really cool concept that, uh, that we're launching that allows um, organizations to crowdsource content. And anyone who has the app installed, uh, you'll be able to create an assignment, for example, put a pin on a map and say, you'll be able to see where your audience is. So if there's a specific assignment with Main Street and Front Street, you'll see you've got within five blocks of there 20 members. If you zoom out to 10 blocks, maybe you have 50 members, you can send them a geo push notification and give them something specific to do. If it's some breaking news like a car accident, take a picture or video of that and, and send that in. So we're really excited about that. So how do you implement these great UGC programs? You can do this with Brightcove and File Mobile. There's a, a whole variety of products and APIs that allow you to get up and running very, very quickly and uh, you've got a wealth of knowledge from Brightcove and FileMobile on how to do this stuff, best practices, and, and the like.